the Henry Homesteader. Let's check it out. Henry Repeating Arms is known for its lever action rifles and they make some of the best in the country. I mean, they are beautiful, well fitted, American walnut stocks, number of different calibers. And Henry is a very popular option and for good reason. But they have just introduced their Homesteader. Now this is their first semi-automatic rifle and it's a PCC or a pistol caliber carbine in nine millimeter, uh, semi-automatic blowback action, but it has that wood stock, which gives it a very traditional look to it. Similar to the Ruger PC9, but yet it's not tactical. And yet it can be used for home defense, used for hunting, used out on the trail, used hiking, definitely great at the range. Uh, one of the things about this rifle though, is it comes with a number of different options for magwells. I have one of the Glock magwells installed and it comes in that configuration or you can order the SIG P320 Smith & Wesson M&P magwell conversion. But Henry also offers their own proprietary mag which is a 10 rounder and a 5 rounder and so it gives you just a lot of options. Uh, one of the things I love about it is it gives you a really high round capacity if you want it but then if you want a really short mag you can go with it as well. So we're gonna take a look at the Henry Homesteader. And guys, a lot of people love this traditional look. It does go away from the black rifle type look, the tactical look, and it just gets down to home, thus the Homesteader. And we really appreciate Henry for sending the Homesteader for this review. All right guys, the Henry Homesteader. Uh, this is a nine millimeter semi-automatic rifle. American Walnut stock's beautiful. I mean, the aluminum receiver, it's just classic Henry all the way through this gun. Uh, first thing let's do is go ahead and make sure the gun is unloaded. We're gonna open it up. It does have a last round bolt hold open. And here we have one of the five round Henry magazines. But they also offer a 10 round. And these are proprietary for the Henry Homesteader. Uh, and so one of the big things about this rifle is that it has interchangeable magwells. Now we also got the Glock magwell. It's real easy to install, uh, but we use this mainly at the range because it's just, <laughs> we've got a ton of Glock mags and we've got five, 10 and five rounds here. You can also get the SIG P320, which also fits the Smith & Wesson M&P series mags. And so when you pick up one of these, you just decide which one you want, or you can get all three. These are also available. But the little five rounder fits in there really close. Um, you know, the anodized receiver, uh, we have a 16.3 inch barrel. We have ghost ring sights at the back. Uh, here at the front, we have a post, and you can switch that out if you want. The receiver does accept one of the Weaver 63B bases. It's drilled and tapped, so it's really easy to install it. If you want to go with some kind of optic, red dot, small scope, whatever. Nice rubber butt pad. Uh, and one of the things about this rifle is it is blowback. And so you're going to get a little bit of kickback uh, from the action moving forward. And most of the recoil mechanism is right here under the handguard. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. But you can see the texturing right here. This is not your standard checkering that a lot of Henry's have. I mean, this is a rough leather-like texturing. And I say rough, but it's really smooth to the touch, but it does give you a lot of gripping surface. 
not only to the handguard, but also back here to the pistol grip. And so it's just a very well done, very muted, and yet you've got a nice texturing. Of course, the furniture itself is absolutely beautiful. And they source this uh, American Walnut, and I mean, it, the grain in this is gorgeous. Of course, you know, you get different pieces according to the rifle. And we also have texturing here at the bottom. Uh, we have sling swivels here at the front and also back here at the back. Now the receiver with the Henry mags, it has a little mag catch here at the front. Uh, it's different on the Glock mag and we'll look at that. But this is the module that you can replace if you want. And uh, you just pull out the three separate screws and really it's the same way you do to break it down. So we're gonna be looking at all that at once. Now here's your bolt hold open or bolt stop right here. And so right now, uh, we've got it down, but let's say that we want to pull it back. We engage the bolt stop and it's locked. And so this just opens it up. Uh, fairly small uh, little charging handle right here. It's adequate. I'd like to see a little bit bigger charging handle. Then we have our safety here at the back and it's kind of the Mossberg style. So it's right there. It's either right or left, so it's ambidextrous. Uh, and then of course with the bolt stops, there's one on either side. So really this is very ambidextrous friendly. Now one of the things about the charging handle, which makes this really easy, you'll notice that there is a slot right here on the other side. I love being able to change this uh, charging handle in the field. So we just bring it back, engage our slide stop, and now just pull it out. And then turn it over and put it in. <laughs> it's that simple. Really, I prefer it on this side. I've shot the whole time with it on the other side just because that's the way it came, but this is really my preferred way. I like to be able to grab it just like that. Man, I mean, this thing is just surprisingly well done. Really nice craftsmanship on the receiver. Again, it is aluminum uh, and it kind of helps with the weight. And then of course you have your steel barrel. And then here at the end, we have a thread protector for half by 28 threads. So you can put a suppressor on this one. The overall length is 35 and three quarter inches. And so it does have that carbine size. And I mean, it's really handy. It's very well balanced. And, but yet it has that old school design to it. Uh, to me, really kind of reminiscent of some of the old Browning rifles. Now the closest comparison would be to the PC9 carbine. It has a lot of the same features. This has the uh, Midwest Industries M-Lock rails. Uh, it does have the ghost ring sights, protected sight at the front. It is threaded. Uh, you have your um, charging handle right here. This one takes Glock mags, but you can also switch out the Magwell for Ruger mags. Synthetic stock. I mean, we've done a full review on this rifle, uh, but really it's two worlds apart. You know, they're all functioning the same. Uh, you're not going to put any kind of light on this without having to drill into the wood. But this is more of a tactical type rifle. And then this is more of a ranch rifle, homestead rifle. One thing though about the Ruger is that I can take it, pull my bolt back, twist this, and it makes it a really small package. And again, that kind of goes with the tactical side. And to reinstall it, uh, there's the lever right here. Pull back a little bit on your bolt. Find that hole, and there we go. And we're back in business. So Ruger did a great job on this. But again, this is a medium price rifle. It's beautiful in a sense. I mean, it's all black, very user-friendly, very ready to go. But the Henry takes it to another level, and that's really the big thing. And because of the wood furniture, it definitely reminds me of the M1 carbine. And this is in 30 caliber, which you have your 9mm here. This gives you a little more power. Uh, but this, of course, was used during World War II, Korea, Vietnam. I mean, these have been really through the ringer. This one's been through the ringer <laughs> on its own. But the way it handles... It just, to me, reminds me of the M1 carbine. Weight on the Henry Homesteader. Six pounds, 12 ounces. As far as the trigger action, we have a, just a teeny bit of take up right here, and then a nice break. It's not super crisp, but it's really solid. For reset, right there. Check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Five pounds, seven ounces. Five pounds, 2.7 ounces. I want to give big thanks to Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo. All made in the USA, one of the number one suppliers of ammunition in the country. 
And also we appreciate Lula Loaders uh, loading up all these mags. <laughs> these things are awesome. Guys, it's just beautiful quality. Uh, that's one of the big pluses for this rifle. The wood stock, uh, the aggressive texturing. I mean, this isn't a tactical rifle by any means, but yet it's very capable of self-defense. It's capable of, you know, different magazine options. Of course, we're going with the Glock mags just because they're more plentiful for us. But uh, the Henry mags are great, really short option. And you can do, you know, extended magazines as well. But very balanced. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the old M1 carbine, and I think that's one of the big appeals. I love the, the little M1 uh, 30 caliber, but 9mm, you know, it's just soft to shoot. It does have the blowback action, so you have a little bit of pushback, but it's very manageable. But, you know, the iron sights are excellent. Those ghost ring sights, they really pick up very well on target. Putting a red dot on here would be cool, uh, but I kind of like that traditional look. Overall, it's just a, a great little rifle. We haven't had any malfunctions. We did have one time where the slide didn't hold back on one of the last rounds. But just really, just a great little rifle. <laughs> just ring that steel. I mean, those sights do pick up really well. Uh, threaded barrel, if you want to throw on a, a suppressor on that, you can. Simple to take down, but again, the Henry look to it and just the quality. Doesn't take long to go through these mags either. This is a lot of fun. Now we want to shoot some jacketed hollow point defense ammunition through it just to make sure it'll function. And this is the Fiocchi, it's the Extrema XTP line, 124 grain XTP jacketed hollow points. Stuff. Now when it comes to disassembly, we've got the magazine out, check the chamber is empty. You have three pins in the receiver and you're going to need to remove all three. I'm taking a bench block, but you can do it however you want to, set it up. And it doesn't matter which way you go, the pins will go either way. Then the pins come all the way out. The great thing is, is all three pins are the same and they do have ridge lines on either side that keep them into the receiver uh, with springs that lay across. Now you want to take your receiver and just lift it up. And once you do, it'll separate it from the buttstock. Uh, here is your hammer assembly and your trigger assembly. And so it's in the back. Then we can just go ahead and remove our magwell. Now we want to remove the front handguard. And there's a small screw at the front. It's angled so you can actually take your Allen wrench and turn it under the barrel, which I thought was a nice touch. And then take your handguard and it just slides right off the front. And here is your recoil assembly. Everything's right here. You've got your recoil spring. Now here we have our guide rods. And you're going to want to take and pinch both sides at the same time. Lift up, keeping your bolt down, and then let it go forward. Then just push the rod forward and it comes loose. And it's nestled in this bolt assembly. Now remove your charging handle and then the bolt up at the front near the chamber will come right out. You can see we put quite a few rounds through this gun. And then you can clean it. 
Now there's no instructions to remove this system itself. It's pretty much self-contained. It's a little bit different for disassembly, but once you do it a couple of times, it's really simple. And guys, keeping your firearms maintained is a very important process. I mean, you see how dirty this is. We have one of the Otis, this is the Defender Series, and this is for nine millimeter and 223. And one thing that I always recommend taking to the range are steel rods. Otis is known for their military contracts with their snakes. Uh, being able to go through the bore, I love using this. But there are times where we have some issues, maybe a stuck piece of brass, maybe a squib. And so having rods is very important. Uh, and there's so many times at the range, thank goodness we had them because we end up having to use them. Goes right into your range bag, carries those rods. And we're going to be doing a full review on some of their products because Otis has really proven itself to be top notch. And again, military contract for a number of years, made in the USA. Now for reassembly. Uh, we're going to take our bolt and we're going to face it. And now we're going to drop it down. You want those kind of teeth on the back part. So as you drop it in, it fits right down like that. Now guys, with your action bar, go ahead and just get it started into the receiver and bring it down. And then you want to lower it into the area. I mean, it fits right like that. And then you want to take and just push it. And that locks in this little tab. Uh, once you do, uh, your bolt is going to have to go forward. Push it a little bit and it locks into your bolt, just like that. Get your other action bar, get it started. Lower it, fit it in, and then just push it. And it'll lock right here into this little spot. Then it locked right into the bolt. So you want those teeth to go into the bolt. So really, it's not difficult once to get it back together once you get the hang of it. Next, install your handguard. Just come from the front. And you want to make sure this little tab fits into the back of the receiver. There it goes, just like that. Now you want to hold this in place as you put in your screw. Now we're going to install the Glock Magwell. Uh, this is not a modification. This came with the rifle. And now you'll notice the front of the Magwell, there's a little lip. So you're going to want to take it and push it into the receiver. Now we'll take the lower part of the receiver and put it in. It, there's some guidelines that go all the way down. Just push it in like that. Next, we're going to tap in our pins. I like to get them started because I don't want to mar the receiver. And then to finish it up, just take a punch and just even them out. Now I forgot to put my charging handle in, but it's really simple. Just put it in, bring it all the way back, close it down, and you're good to go. So guys, we have a beautiful 9mm PCC carbine or pistol caliber carbine. Uh, the beautiful wood finish, all American walnut. I mean, it's just a very classy looking firearm. I mean, there are other options out there, but if you want to go to the top of the food chain, Henry is putting out one of the best. Uh, also, you know, you've got your mag compatibility with the Glock mags, with the SIG P320 mags, or the Smith & Wesson M&P, or you can go with Henry's proprietary mag system. It's fully ambidextrous, which makes it really nice. I love the ghost ring sights. Uh, that is one of my favorite parts. Uh, really, it just keeps me from putting a red dot on here because those sights are really good. You know, if I wanted to get really tight accuracy, I could have put a scope on here, but you know, for 25 yards, this was not a bad little group. And then you have your threaded barrel so you can put your suppressors on there if you want. And also it already has your swivels already mounted for slings. Now the Henry Homesteader starts out at $928 retail price. And of course, market price is typically less. And that is with the Henry Magwell and the two mags. Now the price with the Glock Magwell installed or the SIG or Smith & Wesson Magwell installed, that's $959. And again, you can get these available separately. Guys, if you want to go with a tactical look, I mean, definitely the Ruger PC9 carbine is an excellent choice. And with taking Glock mags or your Ruger mags, it does break down. Uh, and it's going to be less than your Henry. But the one thing about the Henry with the wood stock, this is a very classic, traditional look and really one that's really at home at the range. And I'm not talking about just the shooting range. <laughs>
So guys, the Henry Homesteader makes a great option for a pistol caliber carbine, and yet it gets back to that traditional look. The wood stock's beautiful, very functional. The fit and finish of this rifle, being fully ambidextrous, having a threaded barrel. I mean, Henry really put a lot of design features into this. Yes, it's gonna run you a little more than your standard uh, pistol caliber carbines, but you're gonna have an heirloom quality firearm. And when you're out at the range, I mean, it's just a solid little carbine. And again, we really appreciate Henry for sending the Homesteader for this review. And guys, this makes a great option, whether home defense, pest control, just going out to the range and plinking. And you have the option for a lot of mag capacity. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. shooting at home. What is it made for? So you can put on your uh, QD swing slip, QD swing slip, QD sink swing, QD sling swivel, the Henry Homesteader. Homesteader, homesteader, steader. <laughs> That's hard for a southern boy to say. It's homesteader. Up in the northwest, not in the northwest. Oh, in the Midwest, you goop. Mag converted, okay, converted, mag converted.